Hello and welcome to the video. This video is about using OpenTX Companion with your radio. Now I've done lots and lots of videos on OpenTX Companion and setting up radios like this and now it's not just FreeSky radios that OpenTX supports, it supports things like the Jumper T16 uh, and other versions of radio as well. It used to support things like the Hobby King radio back in the day which was a very cheap and cheerful way to get into OpenTX. But a lot of people that I speak to are a little bit wary of using Companion, and Companion is incredibly powerful. Now, you can use Companion to flash the firmware onto your radio, but I would also use Companion regularly to back your radio up. You can spend an awful lot of time making lots and lots of different models on here. Companion is great for backing up not only the SD card, but also the model memories and the radio settings. So if something does unfortunately happen to your radio, maybe you leave it out in your back garden in the rain, as one of my friends did, or you just lose it, it gets damaged, whatever, you can get a new radio and then put your models back on it. Now you're going to have to rebind them again, but in terms of all the settings and how you like everything, you'll be able to get your radio up and working pretty well. So this video is for a patron of mine that is uh, struggling with a T16. He's flashed it with OpenTX. Again, I have a video on that. I'll put links to everything I'm mentioning down below in the description. But it's about how do you then uh, get models onto here and get models back and copy things around. Because there are a couple of pitfalls with this stuff. So the first big tip I'll give you is that if you are using OpenTX and flying regularly, particularly in the season where you might be adding new models onto it fairly regularly or tweaking things like the expo or the travel or whatever it is you're doing, I would, as part of your regular maintenance, is plug your radio into OpenTX Companion and download everything and back it up so that you, uh, in something nasty did happen, you have got a record of that. Similarly, if you start to run out of space on the radio, the EEPROM only has so much model memory. Uh, you can see that in uh, the top right hand corner of how many bytes are left. When that's empty, you can't add any more model memories, even if there are model slots. So it can be useful if you have a large fleet to archive off the models from the radio that you're no longer using. I would always recommend pull the SD card out of it uh, and back up the SD card regularly too if you're adding Lua scripts or sound files. Uh, keeping a record of that can be handy. You only need to really keep a copy of that, just cut and paste like you would any uh, any other files on your computer. But I'd do that you know, whenever you make any significant changes to the SD card that you want to keep track of. Always use the same version of Companion as the radio that you're using. Now you can find this by going into the menu of the radio and tabbing across in the radio settings and you can see here that this is OpenTX 2.2 on this particular QX7. You can also, if you long press, back up the contents of the radio to the SD card and that can be handy too. But this means that we are going to have to use OpenTX Companion version 2.2 for it to be okay. If we use an older version, it'll become confused because this is a later version of OpenTX. If we use Companion 2.3 or later, when we import everything and the models, it'll try and update all the model memories to that later version of OpenTX. So for ease and simplicity, I would just check what version of OpenTX you're running on and download that version. Now you can download the version relatively straightforward. You go to this downloads area. Again, I'll put a link to this in the description and all the different versions are here and you can get them for Windows, Mac, Linux, Ubuntu, all kinds of different things. Download it and install it onto your computer with the same version as the version on your radio. Now if you have multiple radios with different versions of OpenTX, that's not an issue. I have OpenTX 2.1, 2.2 and 2.3 companion on my main computer here that I use all the time and I will just double check which ones I've got uh, sometimes the update process you know if a radio is working and you're happy with everything and everything's fine do you want to go through the update process and have all that hassle don't always do it but if you have maybe a couple of radios and different versions of OpenTX running different versions of OpenTX companion having them both on your computer at the same time will work fine I'll show you in a minute how to get all this working. Um, the way that you plug the radio into uh, the computer is very easy. On most radios, you kind of hold these two trim tabs into the middle position and power it up, and it will go into this menu here, plugging the USB cable into the USB port. It's either going to be at the bottom or at the back with things like some of the other radios. It's on the top, but there's only one of them typically. Plugging the USB cable into it and plugging it to your computer, the drivers and everything should be configured automatically. But when you've done that, then you copy the radio contents 
uh, into Companion and then you can edit it and save everything back. A big problem that I come across regularly is someone will just make, want to make a new model, which is fine, but then try and copy that single model back to the radio and actually overwrite the entire contents of the radio. So when we power it on next time, there's just that one new model and everything has disappeared. The way that it works, uh, you need to have the model memory open and to copy and paste it across. Again, I'll show that in a second. Um, and my last tip is if you have strayed away from Companion and you don't like the look of it, uh, I would really recommend downloading it and having a go. If for no other reason, then it's a fab way to keep a backup of your radio. So if something bad happens or you need to archive off model because your radio is getting full, it's the best way to do it. Okay, enough of me banging on. Let's plug the USB cable into the computer and I'll show you how this all works. So here we are in OpenTX Companion running it here on Windows and if you look along the top it says OpenTX Companion 2.2.4 which is the latest uh, companion version which is going to match the OpenTX 2.2 version on the radio. Similarly if it was OpenTX 2.3 on the radio I'd be running the companion 2.3 point whatever. It's the first two numbers that you're really interested in making sure they're identical. The other thing you'll notice here is it's also telling me which radio profile we've actually got set up and you need to make sure that in the settings menu the radio profile is the right radio. So at the moment this is set for my Tyrannus I need to set it for my QX7 and you can see it up at the top. Now, if this is the first time you've played with this, you can also make um, a new radio profile and add it in and that's relatively easy and straightforward. But you need to make sure that you have the same radio type set before you connect everything up. So now we've got that done, let me power up the radio and let me plug in the USB cable. And what you will find is you will get a couple of things appearing when you plug it into the computer. The first one is this uh, with just EEPROM and firmware in it. Don't do anything with that. Close that. Do not touch it. This is your SD card contents. So these are all of the things that the radio is actually using. Again, I would potentially just edit, um, just copy all these, right click. Uh, and then copy them and then put them on somewhere on your desktop, keep them safe. And then if anything happens to your SD card as well, you're going to be fine. But you don't do anything with this because actually what we're going to do is we're going to read the contents of the radio. Now again, whenever you are playing with the radio, the first thing that I would do is I would actually uh, back everything up. So you can read the firmware from the radio it's currently running and save it somewhere. You can also uh, read the models and settings for the radio, which is something I'm going to do in a minute. And you can also back up the radio to a file. This is the first thing that I would do. I'd just choose somewhere on your computer and save it to a file, give it something like a name. In fact, I'm actually going to do this. Let's stick it onto the desktop and we'll call it something like Painless 360 QX7. I would always stick a date on there. It just helps you keep track of everything. It's going to read the models and everything for the radio, and that's going to appear as a file on your desktop. Keep that somewhere safe. It'll come in handy. Now we've backed it up. Let's go and play with stuff. And so we're going to read the models and settings from the radio. And it's going to open them and this is all the stuff that you can see as you scroll through now in here we could change things around so for example here's the one for my uh armaton marmot which is a pretty standard model i use it on lots of different things uh, we can simulate it and uh, it'll simulate the radio and we can do all the bits and pieces we want with it and in here all of these tabs are the same as the tabs that you would find in the individual uh, pages of the radio. Everything is in here, uh, how everything works. Now uh, you can even set it up to play the sound files. So that SD card backup that you did, if you go into settings and then into settings, uh, if you put the SD structure path if you fill this in and actually select the folder where you put and copy those SD card contents, all the things like the voice announcements and the sounds and everything will start working as well. So this is my radio. Now, if I wanted to create another model in here, I absolutely could. Uh, 
Now, the danger is, is that what I sometimes see people doing, let me pop that over there, is they come in here, they go file, new, this is a completely blank memory, and then they set up a new model, and let's just say quad, and let's just, no, 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 blah, blah, blah. Right, okay, there we go. New model. And then what they'll do is they'll want to save that onto the radio. But you cannot, the danger is, is at the moment, I could actually write this currently activated window to my radio and it will only write the quad back. Because what it's do, it writes the entire contents of the EEPROM back in one go. So if I wrote this, I'd lose everything, which is another great reason to back everything up. However, what I could do is I could just copy this across into this memory. Let's discard those changes. And now if I write those models and settings to the radio, I would always do that. There we go. Ta da if I go and check that now on the radio, then surprise, surprise, there's quad at the bottom. So that's the big trick with this stuff. And it does mean that you can actually copy models between other radios using OpenTX Companion as well. I'll link to that video in the description. So if you want to, you can go and have a look. Um, because if you wanted to, and maybe you got a second radio and you wanted to move some, maybe the smaller indoor models to a little X light or something like that, then it's very easy to copy everything around. So here inside Companion, it gets an awful lot easier to set everything up. So we can copy, edit, change things around. It's much easier to type in the names of uh, things like flight modes and other pieces as well than trying to do it on the radio. But hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that have been maybe a little bit worried about Companion. Uh, the trick is for me is always to make sure that you're using the same version of Companion as the radio, just stops a lot of potential problems. You can use later versions of Companion, but for simplicity, I'd always keep the same version, same major version. Uh, every time you connect to it, back up the SD card, back up your radio to a file, and then if you completely mess everything up, you can then write that same backup back to the radio to get it back to how you started. And when you are changing things around, open the models and settings from the radio, edit the things that you want, copy in the things that you don't, and then you, when you finish with everything, write the entire EEPROM back to the radio, and then that will save the changes. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.